Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another week at the State House. Appreciate you coming. Uh, the weather is beautiful. The vacations are over. The children and young people are going back to school. There's a lot of activity out there now. People are getting ready, ready to settle back down. And what I wanted to remind people is that if you are going to get a vaccination, now is a great time to do it. While we're getting ready for the fall, a lot of activity going on, football games are starting again, classes are starting again. Now is a great time. If, if you're ready to get that vaccination, go ahead and get it. Now's the time. As I, you know, Peggy and I and our children have, are fully vaccinated. And we urge everyone to make that decision. There are plenty of places still open, maybe over 900, close to 1,000. It's free. It's convenient. Uh, the lines are not like they used to be way back. You get right in and get out. So go ahead and make your decision. Uh, it is our duty to, during the pandemic, to protect the lives of those that are most vulnerable. And I think that we have done a good job in doing that. And that's our elderly or young and at-risk populations. The new variant, the Delta variant, does pose a real threat. We know that it spreads more easily, but there are some differences between that and the original virus. But shutting our state down, closing schools, and masking children who have no choice for the government to mask children to have no cho who have no choice to protect adults who do have a choice is the wrong thing to do, and we're not going to do it. We're not going to shut our state down as other states did. Mandating masks is not the answer. Personal responsibility is the answer. Common sense is the answer, and we have an abundance of both in South Carolina. I've been vaccinated. I believe that it works. Studies show that all of the vaccines, all three, are highly effective against COVID and the new variant when you've taken both shots in the case of Pfizer and Moderna and the one in case of J&J. &J. So I encourage right now, I encourage every South Carolinian to strongly consider getting vaccinated. As I've said before, the information is out there. You can't get away from it. Talk to your doctor, doctor, talk to loved ones, talk to those who've had the virus, talk to those who have had the vaccination. And you may talk to some who have been in the hospital because uh, all of them have said, it, it seems the stories we hear, they all say the same thing in different ways, and that is, I wish I'd gotten a vaccination. So don't let that happen to you. South Carolina's economy must remain open. That's one difference between the way we did things here and the way they did them in a lot of other places. And our schools must remain open. Working parents cannot stay home with their children every day. You have to work to pay the bills, to feed the families, provide shelter, save for the future and the economic security of their children. If a parent wants the child to wear a mask in school, then that's up to that parent. They can do that. That's their choice. We need to use common sense. State law today prohibits school administrators from requiring students to wear a mask. The General Assembly agreed with my position, and that is that decision is now up to the parents. Looking just at statistics briefly, although we know that cases are on the rise, they're not where they were a year ago. Hospitals then, we had about 13,000 or so hospital rooms. Back then, they were sometimes filled 81%, 79%. And that is, you remember, is when we had the National Guard prepared to augment the supply of those facilities. Uh, today, it's about 77 or over 77%, something like that. So it's, it's less than it was then. That's the point. Back then in ICU, we had almost twice as many people with COVID in the ICU, ICU units as we do today, maybe, maybe not quite that many. 
And on ventilators, we have these days about half as many as we did then. So we have not returned to where we were then, and we don't want to return to where we were then. And the way to avoid that is for everybody to be careful. We now, today, we know, having gone through this for over a year now, we know about the virus. We know it's going to change a little as time goes by, might change a number of times, but we know how to protect ourselves and we know how to use common sense. So I say again, with school starting, football starting, with people are returning from vacations, the, the weather is beautiful, our economy is doing better here than in a whole lot of other states. We're really, other states are, are digging out because they closed down unnecessarily. We did not, and because of that, we're growing. Now is a, the, the perfect time. If you want to get that vaccination, go ahead and get it. Are there any questions? Governor, there are limited uh, virtual learning options for some students and some of our public schools. Given that we have a teacher shortage right now across the state, and not masking has shown in countless studies that there could be outbreaks and transmission, do not worry about the limited learning options that could shut down schools. No, we have, we have so much money coming into the state to, uh, for education now. It's, uh, we, we have plenty of funds to address any shortcomings like that. But we do know this. Of course, if a parent wants to go virtual, then that, that's, that, that's up to that parent. But uh, we know that the virtual learning uh, has not worked very well in South Carolina or anywhere else. We know that because of the children being out of school for so long, we know we do not want to repeat what we went through before. Uh, there are uh, estimates by uh, educators and, and others around the country and even around the world who say that there's some children that never will recover in the educational process because of what they went through. That is, taking a year off is, is just uh, is, highly unadvisable in educating a child and the, the social emotional problems all that stem from it we want to get the children back into school and we do not want to have a repeat of what we did last year do you believe that masking would prevent children needing to go virtual or give comfort to parents who are worried that their children i think those masked? those those are up to the those, those questions are up to this to the parents it's the parents that knows their child, they know the impact this has had on the child, their children, and it, there's ample information about what, it's, what, um, what the risks are and what the risks are not. And we, uh, uh, by state law, we are not going to have mask mandates in the public schools. You mentioned uh, hospital Jamie. capacity. Um, the, uh, there, there are some hospitals, especially metro hospitals, that are now starting to, to feel the strain again. You know, are you prepared to do anything uh, similar to what you did in the past? We will. We'll, the, 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 no, the numbers, the general numbers are down from what they were before. The numbers last year did not reach what uh, we, the, the worst case scenario, which we were prepared for, but it never arrived. And that's because we, we handled it well and we'll do it again this time. I mean, but just to be clear, you know, are you planning to do anything on hospital capacity? We'll, we'll take. We do what what uh, is necessary to protect the people of South Carolina. But right it, it, at this point, it's clear it's not like it was last year. We know how to handle the virus now. It's a completely different situation. Yes, sir. You're talking about the seriousness of the Delta variant. Uh, why haven't you? Why aren't you doing the press conference along with officials with DHEC and other health officials? Why what? Why aren't you doing this press conference along with DHEC well, the information I'm giving you has just come off the press this morning from the DHEC officials. On that, DHEC has said that in order to protect children younger than 12, as you were saying, of course, masking would help, but we're not doing masking in indoor settings with little social distancing well, at school. Yeah, mas ma masking would help, but so would keeping them home. <laughs> so would keeping them in their bedroom. And not sending them to school at all. That would, certain, but that is not. That's not necessary. And there are negative consequences that come from all of that. There's there's a, a way to to make our way through this without activating all the negative consequences that we saw last year. Governor, what, what are those negative consequences of having children that don't wear masks? It's going to stop the children from turning to negative. Well, you, you may you may have read about the the teachers uh, the and educators and, and professionals in that area 
say that it's, it's difficult to communicate with a young child who's wearing a mask. They can't see the teacher's face. Children, the, the teacher can't see the children's faces. The children can't see each other's faces. But the, the whole, the question is, is that necessary to do that, to take that step? And we believe that it is not necessary to take that step, and that's why the legislature passed that law. Governor, yes, sir. Uh, I don't, it, that uh, mandate, I believe, is contrary to the state law. Uh, I don't know if it will be tested in court, but it, the state law is crystal clear that state funds are not to be used to enforce a mask mandate, and the, the very people that were listed as those who would be responsible to enforce the mandate are, of course, paid uh, in whole or part. Uh, with state funds. State funds infused everything that happens in our public school system. Uh, there's no way to get away from it. And whether the mass are provided uh, free or by some other source is, is irrelevant to the question because if the enforcement mechanism is present in the school, then that is using state funds to enforce it. That's my view. I think that's the view of the General Assembly. And I w would think that would be a view of a court if it were presented to a court. Yes, sir. I think it ought to be up to the parents. If, if the parents want to have their children have masks, then they can send them to school with them. That's a, uh, but again, simply providing the, the, the source of the, of the mask is not the question. Is, is, the question is, is it being enforced uh, through directly or indirectly with the use of state funds? So the, the closer you get to the answer uh, to that being the yes, then the, the more of a violation it is. Yes, sir. Yeah, one of the things that you uh, did last year to guard against the virus, you're saying today you just will not do it for cases are not at a certain level. What is that level or that threshold? There's no magic number. The, the thing to remember is that we, we are dealing with a virus that we know this year. We did not know it last year. We, we, we took measures based on our best information at the time. The information right now is that these masks are not necessary in the schools. They, they, we do not, do not need uh, to have the school mandating uh, that. It ought to be up to the parents. Yes, sir. Would you consider loosening restrictions in case there is a potential outbreak in schools? We are getting information and analyzing and being very careful as we were last year and there's no need to require for the government to require masks in school at this time there's just no need for it now if the you listen to some of the national press and some of the, even some of the national experts who i believe are exaggerating engaging in hyperbole and and unnecessarily alarming people, you may think otherwise. But the, but the facts show, some of which I just recited, show that we're in a different situation from that we were in this time last year. Yes, ma'am. I couldn't hear you. See, that's the problem. I can barely hear you. And imagine if everybody in the schools wearing a mask. That's the problem. That's one of the problems. And you are hollering. <laughs> no, that's just that's something we know uh, uh, that the, there are breakthrough cases. I think Lindsey Graham w was one. He felt like he had a cold. We we know that we know that the the vaccinations, the statistics, the numbers, any way you cut them, are, are, are demonstrate that if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Uh, you are in a much better place than if you are not. And the numbers, the vast majority uh, of, of people who are fully vaccinated uh, have completely different histories and occurrences from those who are not. Two more questions. With the information, with the information that you get from the CDC, 
Do you agree that wearing masks do help slow the transmission of the uh, virus? Do I agree that wearing a mask? Yeah, do you believe that it plays a part? Yeah, I, I think the, the, uh, the, the statistics uh, show, yes, that it, it does has not much effect or much smaller effect on something coming into your system, but it does retard that going out of your system to someone else, if it's someone close by. So, Governor, when it comes to DHEC's own guidance, you mentioned the CDC, but DHEC is recommending gap masks to make back to school safer. If we are not masking, what are we doing? Well, I could, uh, is optional, but right. what are we doing to make well, safer I, this? The SAFER is urging people to, if they want to get vaccinated, to remind them that now is a good time to do it. But there are a lot of things that could make things safer. If everybody parked their car, we'd probably have a whole fewer, fewer accidents on the road than we, than we do because people are driving. But we have to drive. Our commerce has to go on. We have to go to school. Children have to learn. And in, if it is not necessary if for the government to require, to man, this is the government mandate to mandate that they wear a mask over the opposition of the parents, and we're, we're simply not going to do that. That is not the government's role. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.